Well, I guess we are back to my question about Monica. Do you still want her? Please. Listen, I can't give you a written guarantee that the feeling I had for Monica the other night isn't still there. I'm not asking for a guarantee. I'm asking for an answer. All right. Honestly, it, it probably still exists. Thank you but we... for being so honest with me. Rick, um... I don't think I can continue to share your bed. Leslie. I can move into the guest room. We can certainly put a good face on it as far as anybody else is concerned. May I say something now? I would like to clarify one thing, just in case you misunderstood. The fact that I admitted that there is an attraction for Monica, and maybe there was one there all along, has nothing to do with how much I find you attractive to me. You are still the woman I love and I want for my wife. I can't be a substitute for her. You are not, and you never could be. Don't you understand? I couldn't be sure of that now. Rick, uh, I'm being as open with you as I know how to be. The fact that you've said that... that you still care for me doesn't change what's going on. We seem to have two separate problems here. I guess we have to solve them separately, and if we're going to have separate lives, then maybe we should have separate beds. What are you going to tell Laura? The truth? As far as we can without being hurtful. I don't think she has to be burdened with your relationship with Monica, your evening with Monica. But I do think she's old enough to understand that sometimes people who are married have problems that they have to work out on their own. You know, I, maybe I'm not old enough because I still think that people that are married, when they have problems, they work them out jointly. Leslie, if I had been unfaithful to you, I could understand what you're saying better. I feel like I'm being punished for an action I never committed. I don't want this to become an argument. That's not what it's about. You keep saying, technically, you didn't do anything. But as far as I can see, the fact that you wanted her and you didn't make love to her is worse for our marriage than if you had, because maybe, if you had, maybe you would have just gotten it out of your system now it becomes forbidden fruit and that's the hardest kind to resist i feel quite confident that i have the ability to control my own emotions i'm glad for you i admire you in that i wish i could be as confident about anything in my life I, my confidence has been chewed away at so much it's it's not even there anymore it's right up at the top of my list of things to be repaired Leslie, I, I never meant to undermine your self-confidence. I know you didn't. Not consciously. The thing is, I have got to make myself a whole woman again. And until I do, I can't take any more insecurity. You just think sleeping alone is going to help solve things? I think it will keep things from getting any more complicated. Until you can want me at least as much as you do, Monica. And I believe that. I don't see how we can have her. Must you make Monica the criteria for everything? She's the woman who attracts you. Yeah, well, that's an attraction that I can control. I keep telling you that. For now? I want to ask you something. Go ahead. I really have made some progress with this therapy thing. It means so much to me. I'm proud of it. I don't want to give up one little inch of the ground I've gained. Would you come to the sessions with me? They're designed for, for couples who are having problems in their marriage. It could help you as much as it helps me. Not in your life, Leslie. You won't? You know my feeling on that. You've known it since the beginning, and it hasn't changed one bit. Sorry to hear that. Because I think it's the one path we could have taken to get. It worked against me. 
I think I knew the answer before I asked the question. I guess I was just still hoping I was wrong. Are you going to discuss this thing about Monica and me in front of a group of strangers at your uh, therapy session? I have to. I don't know where else to go to get help. I... I don't think it's going to be easy, but it can't possibly be any more difficult than talking about my own guilt for lying to you, for being dishonest. I talked about that, and it helped. I, I was able to see that I wasn't the only one who had a share in that blame. All that time that you kept telling me that there was nothing to my ideas about you and Monica, that it was all my imagination, that it was my insecurities, you were being just as dishonest with me. That's how you are characterizing it. That is not the way it was. Rick, you just said the attraction never ended. I've got to fight this. This is a very real thing here. I have to fight the fact that you are attracted strongly to another woman while you claim to love me. I don't claim to love you. I happen to love you. I think underneath that you love me as well. Of course I love you. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't be here. And I hope with all my heart that we can get back together again. You think this is the only way to achieve it? I don't know how else to do it. I can't let you make love to me now. I'd feel like a prostitute knowing that all the time you were wishing for someone else. Why do you keep saying that? That is not the case. I believe it's the truth. And I have got to find a way to come out of all of this as a whole human being, Rick. I just have to. Do you have anything else to say? Will you excuse me? talk was about. I guess I hope maybe you'll change your mind. I can't change my mind. I I don't know any other way. Well, look, if you're so insistent upon separate sleeping quarters, you don't have to do that. I will. All right? I don't care who sleeps where. I've started it. I might as well finish. Leslie. Have it your own way, but I will do the moving. What was happening, and I wanted you to hear it for me. And then things really are worse between you two. In a way, yes. But we are going to try to work them out. We both want that very much. Can you? I don't know. It's a little early to know that yet. But the important thing, I believe, is that we both want to. And that we both have great hopes that we can. I don't understand. Just before the quarantine was lifted, you were so sure that things were going to be better when Dad got home. Yes, I know. Something terrible must have happened to have changed all that. What was it, Leslie? You haven't called me that in a while. I'm sorry. I mean, Mother. Hey, it's okay. Anyway, what went wrong? I really can't go into all of that right now. I just... I wanted... I wanted to tell you that for the time being... Rick and I are going to be sleeping in separate rooms, and I wanted to make sure that whatever problems we're having don't threaten your sense of security in any way. But it does. No, you mustn't let it. You must have faith that we're going to be able to work things out. Mr. Higgins came by Scotty's apartment tonight, and he said that he'd been here earlier. Yes, he was. Um, he came here to remind us of our responsibility to you. That's why I wanted to talk to you and to emphasize to you that no matter what problems we may be having, 
As far as Rick and I are concerned, your happiness and what's good for you couldn't be any more important. And to tell you that you can help us by just behaving as normally as possible and by believing that we're doing everything possible to save our marriage. Sounds terrible when you put it that way. Oh, I don't mean it to. I'm trying to choose my words very carefully here. Mother. Mother, please. Won't you tell me what that argument was about when Dad got home that morning? I can't, Laura. I'm, I am sorry. I really can't. I think it's time that we tried to get some sleep. Are you coming up? In a few minutes. Oh, don't look so forlorn. I hope you know that I want nothing but the very best for you. I also want it for me. And I'm going to have it. For you and for me.